Good afternoon, my name is Steven Chun at the Guild Hall at SMU and this tutorial is on the basics of UDK Collision. Today we'll be using UDK version May 2011 and the date of this video is June 2011. In this tutorial we will be covering what Collision is, why it's important, and some general information about Collision as it pertains to UDK. Now, why is Collision important? Collision is important because without collision in a, on an object, you can't interact with it in the game. The game has no way of knowing how to respond to the boundaries of that object. What this translates into in terms of practical experience is things like hitboxes, triggers, and movement. For instance, for a hitbox, say you have a person. Now, if a weapon is shot at the person, the game does not know whether or not the person is hit without some sort of collision involved. Now if the collision box is very big, then the person will be is hit. But if it's very small and more accurate, then the person won't be hit. For things like triggers, UDK will use collision to determine whether or not someone is touching the trigger. If the person is not touching, the trigger doesn't go off. But if it is touching, such as in this case, the trigger will go off and the UDK will be able to respond to that through Kismet or Unreal Script. In addition, UDK will use it for movement to determine whether or not the player can move through an object or through a space. With collision, the player will simply stop and collide with the object. But without collision on that object, the player will simply be able to walk right through the object. Now you may ask, why not just use the visible mesh, especially for a complicated shape? The reason is because of two things, primarily the details and also engine efficiency. Say we have a complex mesh such as a car with a lot of fins, wires, and objects upon it. If we were to ha have collision on the entire thing, including the details, what would happen is that the player would bump into the fenders, they would bump into the wires coming off the antennas. The weapons would bounce off that as well and apply that to the, to the object. This can be an issue for movement if the player is trying to move around the car and they collide with the fender, just a small part, and for some reason they are stopped. Or if they're jumping over it and they're stopped by the antenna. Or when so they're trying to shoot past the car and some small object blocks it. This can be unrealistic or produce bad effects for the gameplay. Now, the second reason is a matter of efficiency. If you were to have the collision mesh of the object encompass the exact collision and use the visible mesh, what would happen is, as you can see here, there's a lot of angles, a lot of details, so that every s time something collides with the object, the engine would have to calculate every single detail of that. This can produce unwanted results, especially with physics, but it will also add a m big resource drain on the engine because it has to calculate all these different angles and pieces colliding with each other. On the other hand, if you have a much more simple collision mesh, such as shown, then it has far less collisions it needs to handle, and the engine and game will run smoother. Now, for collision, as far as UDK handles it, it handles it as a set of rigid bodies. What rigid bodies are, are objects that cannot deform. So the space collision does not handle things like cloth or what liquid or anything of that sort. For what UDK looks for in its collision mess is convex objects. Now what is a convex object? A convex object is an object with no holes in it or no indentions in it. An easy way to determine if an object is concave or convex is to draw a line through it. If the line passes through more than one side, then it is concave. If it only passes through two sides, and only two sides, it is convex. Unreal and UDK use convex objects because it is much more efficient. Although you can have concave objects, you will find that it can dramatically reduce the frame rate of your engine. Now, in addition to collision, UDK also makes two distinctions when it comes to collision. It can determine whether or not something is touching an object or 
whether or not it is actually overlapping. It calls these two distinctions collision or touching, and then it calls overlapping as blocking. If something is blocking an object, then it is overlapping. If something is simply colliding, then it is touching in some manner. This can be important because for things like triggers, you want it to know when the player is overlapping or when a weapon hits it, but you don't necessarily want the player or the weapon to actually affect and be stopped by it. Thank you for listening to, to this tutorial. The second part of this tutorial will cover how to create collision in UDK. Thank you.